What's up guys, Nick Major here, APTV correspondent out here on Warp Tour 2016 all summer long. I had a great in-depth chat with Telly from The Word Alive about all the different bands he's been in and what brought him to where he is today, as well as Luke who decided to come and sit in partway through the interview, so stay tuned to see what the both of them had to say. We're finally having our first interview. We've never chatted before with each other. That's I've never met you until right now. Actually, you know the first time we ever met? Do you remember? No. It was at the, Tell the, me and I probably the Warp Tour Ohio show. Mike Shea introduced us on your, it was on your guys' bus. Cleveland? Yes. Cl yeah, Cuyahoga Cleveland Falls. Show. Is that, is that what it's called? Cuyahoga. Cuyahoga Falls. I think. I'm from Ohio, but no one knows how to say it. Even even the Ohio, any Ohio. Ohioan. Ohioans. That's yeah. what I meant. They don't know think, how to say I it. Think it's what, part, a, what part of Ohio are you from? Uh, I grew up in Dayton, Ohio. So how, how old were you when you first started uh, making bands and stuff? Um, I started my first band uh, when I was 18. Um, kind of a late bloomer in uh, the touring world. Um, most of my band and other friends, they started like playing music at like 10, 11, 12, 13, somewhere around there. I, I didn't know that I wanted to be in a band until I was about 19, even though I started one, but I just did it for, for fun. fun. I was just like, everyone should start a band at least once. Uh, we were horrible. Uh, one of the worst things that's ever actually recorded a song. You have um, songs recorded? Uh, we did, yes. So um, they are somewhere. Where can they be there, heard? There's some burned CDs uh, in my mom's storage. I think <laughs> that I buried them in the very back. Um, but there's some, yeah. What was that? What was Everyone that band had, called? Uh, it's not even worth mentioning, really. But uh, <laughs> the name was maybe even worse than we were. Experimental Unison. Hey, that sounds like a damn good band to me. Everyone, check out Experimental Unison. <laughs> yeah. uh, it would on um, pure volume about twelve years ago. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, that was my first band, and then it just kind of like g kept growing on me, kept growing on me. I just felt this uh, drive this pull towards music um i i was in college i think i was in my second year of college when i realized uh that i just could not stop thinking about where i was gonna try to get my band to play was it what shows. was it about the uh being in a band that uh drew you so much was it the live performance the writing all of it oddly enough um i think it was probably everything else it was like having you know like those friends that you came you like had some of these awesome we had weekends where we drive up and play like akron and um cleveland columbus um just play like random really shitty venues um not that all the venues in those cities are shitty but those were the ones we were allowed in the door um and but i loved the drives i loved researching like how to get our band playing more shows like just the whole process, like everything about it, obviously like the playing and the writing, um, you know, those are parts that are the fun stuff to most people, but I actually enjoyed the just as much type like, stuff. yeah. Um, and that's kind of how it, it worked out for me to continue to progress further in the music industry is, uh, I wanted to tour kind of like any way I could. So I actually went out and I drove, I did merch, um, for Emerosa, um, their first tour ever. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, what year was that that you were doing that? 2007. Um, so my, my local band that was, I guess, the like the Dayton People Knew It band um, would play with their band, which was Corsets or Cages in Lexington, and we would swap shows and things like that. So we became friends. Um, they, they had behind the scenes changed their name, signed to Rise, um, they're like, we're going on tour. We need another guitar player. Maybe you could come out, drive, do merch, maybe learn the guitar parts and at some point play. Um, well, a lot of people don't know. Emeros almost broke up after that tour. Uh, I actually only All went on stage with them once. It was, it was me. <laughs> Just the worst merch guy ever. So what, what happened? Why did they almost break up? Uh, girl stuff. Uh, well, you know, down to the relationship with some, drama. some old members. But, you know, like back then, like it sounds kind of stupid now that we're all, you know, grown ass men. But you got to go through that, uh, I guess, weird time where you think, no offense to the lady in the room, uh, that just like girls kind of like are top of the food chain in life. Um, and you slowly, you know, grow out of that. But there's two members that were fighting over a girl, basically. And uh, I'm sure they don't tell that in interviews uh, for good reason. But um, 
at the end of the tour, um, they stopped practicing. Some people weren't talking to each other. And I was like, well, I just quit my job, I dropped out of college. <laughs> You're like, well, I'm screwed. And, uh, <laughs> and so I was like, sick, guys. You know, perfect timing for me. And so I literally, uh, uh, I was searching for bands, looking for a singer, because that's what I really wanted to do. Um, and I heard of a band called In Fear and Faith in Oceanside, California. Um, so I hit them up. Uh, can't remember. I think it was through a MySpace bulletin. Those were the days, like, right? It's, everything is so different now. But um, so they had like this thing, and I uh, I reached out and I packed my car. I didn't say goodbye to my family or anyone, and I literally just uh, left like Ohio. You, you reached out. You sent like a video out to them, a test vocals, or how, how did no, that work? No, no vocals, no nothing. They just said if you show up on this date, you can try out. And so I literally packed my car full of everything I owned, all my music stuff. And, uh, Sorry, <laughs> and um, I, I then went into um, their house where they were doing um, like practice stuff, I guess. And I tried out and they were like, do you want to be in the band? And right, so right then I joined the band. I pretty much moved in because I was living out of my car and I didn't go back home for like two years um, and made that my life. So when you were doing Amorosa, you did a guitar for them for one show? Basically, right? yeah. And what was it about vocals then that always attached to you? Was that what you were doing in your first band when you were 18? You were doing vocals in that band? Yeah, but I also won't play guitar. I wanted to play guitar. That was like my, my dream was like to be a guitar player. Oh, really? But I just was not good enough. Um, and <laughs> because my, my, both my parents sang like not professionally or anything, but just like, it was always a thing that we did in my house. Um, and, um, so I just had sang my whole life and, um, people would always be like, well, can you sing backup vocals? I'm like, yeah, sure. And then I would always sing, and then it eventually got to the point where they didn't want the singer in the band anymore, and they're like, well, you can just sing, so just sing. And th but I'm like, I want to play guitar. Was that with Fear? Um, or was before? Oh, before. okay, okay. In, in Fear and Faith, I strictly like came to try out as a singer. Um, I ended up like helping to write some songs and guitar um, back in the day, but. Um, I just kind of found that that was my thing. Like that was the first band that really gave me the opportunity to be like the singer. Um, and I just tried to stick with it. Um, then after that came Greeley, Greeley Estates. That's right. Which you played Warp Tour with. Uh, I did in 2008. That was my first Warp Tour, both attending and playing. Uh, which was Oh, really attending cool and thing. playing. Yeah. Wow. Um, because in my first substantially known local band, um, our, our dream was to play Warp Tour. Um, and I was just like, I'm not gonna go to Warped until I play it. That's the kind of person I am. I like to set like set a goal, a goal, and, and then like, that's like my thing. Luke also did the same thing. He didn't go to Warped until he played it. Um, this what, what, Luke, year, what year? What year was that? Guys. What uh, year? Uh, that was two years ago. Fourteen. Damn, you don't go to Warped Tour until two years ago. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So okay, we're about to get to Word Alive, and that's where you will become no, into this I'm conversation. Just I'm just enjoying. Just a little arm support, but so you you bounced around in a few bands because then you and then eventually obviously you found where you are now, which is the the front man of Word Alive. So how did it come to be that you became a member of this band? Uh, so I was playing bass and doing backup vocals for Greeley Estates because, like I had mentioned before, like my whole thing was like I just want to be on tour. I just want to be a part of it. Want to grow, progress, learn more and more because this is what I wanted to do with my life. Um, so I joined the band. Love those dudes. Um, and honestly had some of the best times I've ever had on tour with them because they were all older. I was the youngest one. So I'm coming in they were like more like established and they were like, this, this is just how things are. And I just kind of fit in, um, with that found my role. And then, um, about a year into being in the band, uh, we had started to write for the next album, um, which would become no rain, no rainbows, um, or bows. There might be plural. Um, but it was like, substantially heavier uh some people call it death metal or death core or something like that it was very very heavy and when i joined the band it was under the premise that on the next album i would be You'd doing be a lot of the and singing mm -hmm. and ryan would switch over to do more screaming with like selective singing was that um, your goal was to transition more to and just that, and sing? that was my goal that i was like i was willing to play an instrument and sing but as long as i could sing and be kind of prominent um in that 
then I would do that. And so when we started to like write and everything was super, super heavy and I was like, this just isn't my thing. Um, so I hit up one of my friends, uh, David Ludlow, who still to this day is uh, um, associated with uh, Greeley Estates. Um, and he went out on tour um, with them in my place and I tried out for The Word Alive um, almost instantly. And uh, for me, I feel like I was fortunate enough that they picked me. Were you like, like thank God, finally, I have a yeah. band now that I am... It, at first, of. it was a little rough, honestly, because like I had to learn how to scream to join the band. I didn't. Oh, know. so in f- when you're doing fear, then I was only it was, doing. It was only singing. singing. So then, fast forward to the word alive, and I had kind of like faked my way through something that sounded like screaming in my tryout. Um, but I sang well enough that they're like, "Yeah, like you know, if you want it, we're." gonna demo this song that we all just wrote together it was a challenging process but um when it when it was all said and done i i was so driven at it and the guys thankfully um you know tony and zach are guitar players they were like understanding enough to be like okay well he can sing we, we love his voice and we we believe that he will work hard enough to kind of be successful at everything else mm-hmm. it's, it's hopefully sooner than later but just along the way um and i brought other things to the table that they hadn't i had toured before i you know i, w- I was a little more established as far as so what was the name. status of because the word alive they were still pretty fresh yeah when they, you had they'd only had a few demos um with uh, my boy craig from escape the fate it's such a small world everyone that. ends up like going around to, di- to different bands that's yeah. how it ends up being um so so basically craig got an offer to join escape the fate Shortly, maybe a month or two after he, he recorded the first demos for The Word Alive, he ended up obviously taking that, um, which taking an established you know band offer that was good for him and his family um, versus a band that was just starting out bare bones. So how did, how did you feel about that? Because you'd come into a few established bands and um, you were really coming into this project at its creation I, almost. I really wanted to be a part of it from the ground up because when I first heard the songs, I actually was on Warp Tour and some of the guys in Greeley were really close friends with some of the guys in Word Alive. So was Word Alive playing this that Warp Tour the first year that you played with Greeley? They hadn't played shows yet, but they had just recorded some demos. Okay, just songs um, that were floating around. Yeah, then. Um, and but they sent them to us like, hey, show the guys, like check them out. I heard it and I was like, man, mu- like musically, I really love it. I was like, secretly, I was like, I wish I was in a band like this singing for them. Um, and then me and Zach became friends. Me and Tony had already become friends. And then when it came time, they, they asked me to try out, join the band. And um, it's been, you know, like technically I'm not like the first singer, but I definitely consider like the World Live, like my band. Um, how how long have you guys show. been going now as the, with you at least fronting it? Um, my first show was December 6th or something like that of 2008. Wow. So like eight, eight years, years ago almost. Yeah, That's almost this, this winter, um, which will be on tour. Um, so yeah my eighth year in the word alive the eighth year of the word alive's existence became official in april or may um, oh wow so recent so that was like within yeah. eight months of the band first being created yeah. that they had played i think like five or six shows um with craig mm-hmm. um and um one in anaheim at chain reaction and then the rest i think around arizona and so yeah, I've done every tour, every album that's been released. So I definitely consider it, you know, like it is your my, band, my, is my, my band. Um, and, um, I, obviously like where we've gotten to today is not where we started, but you know, with Luke Daniel. Yeah. Tell now, me how you came across this guy. Okay. So, um, first time meeting. Right yeah. Now. Uh, the, we've actually never talked. He just kind of comes on tour with us and plays drums. Yeah. Uh, you actually don't know what happened to the last drummer. <laughs> he just stopped <laughs> showing up and he started. Actually, coming. he, no one does. He disappeared. Uh, weird. Luke. Uh, Sorry. Um, so basically, um, our old drummer, Justin, um, he had decided, he had been touring for years and years and years. He'd been about touring almost 10 years when, um, he decided to, um, stop touring uh, get a job back home. Oh, so it was on his terms that it he was, was ready to leave. And he, he let us know we were totally fine, but we were also right about to record Life Cycles, our album. Um, so this is 2012. Yeah, 2012. Um, and we had already written the whole album. Um, and then we're like, oh, shoot, well, we don't have a drummer. So we asked our friend Matt Horn, um, who was our longtime drum tech, um, to play drums for the album. He did. 
we were looking behind closed doors for a drummer and some fan randomly just put um, on my Facebook wall a video because they knew I like I like remix stuff. I, I'm, I love drums. Um, were you ever a drummer? No, uh, I'm not good at all. I wouldn't even say not very good. I'm just like not good. Um, but I love drums. Like I love, I love watching. Let him play. I love He's watching than you. them and the energy. Like the fact that you can just beat the shit out of something and it sounds cool. Like to me, it's just a weird concept. It's like I wonder how someone discovered that, you know, and kind of got to singing. I understand more. Um, even even that. guitar, you know, because it's so melodic. But drums and how they actually can be very melodic, but just the impact they have on music. It's like um, an artistic way to keep the tempo of the song. Yeah, but just so like the it's music so side crazy. of it. Yeah, maybe someone was just like bobbing their head to someone singing along one day, and then started hitting their hand, you know, whatever it was. Give but, me some buckets. Yeah, exactly. Something to bang on. And um, so yeah, so someone posted a video of Luke doing a remix of Cinema, uh, a Skrillex song. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, this is awesome. And I thought it was awesome because it was him showing his creative side. It wasn't just like a playthrough um, where it's like sometimes it's hard to tell if the, if the drummer or a singer. So it's like, what do you actually bring to the table? Because we needed someone who could write, who could contribute. We didn't want someone who could just play parts. Like we wanted to take it up, you know, a notch with the percussive side of our band um, and just the whole rhythm section, we knew like how important drums were. Um, so I sent the video to our label, Fearless, um, to management, to the rest of the band, and uh, two other videos. I think at the time, I can't remember what it was, but it was like the craziest technical one he had. And then another remix or something. And I was like, look, this shows like he can play what we have, what we've done. It also shows he has this other creative side that this is his influence. This is what he perceives from hearing the music. He can bring a whole element to and it. And brought a whole new element. And then we looked and we're like, well, he's in Arizona. So they were like, we'll hit him up. So I wrote him a message on Facebook, slid in that DM. Uh, Slick. basically said like, hey, you know, my name's Tully from The Word Alive. We're a band not that far from you. Don't know if you know of us or not, um, but we're looking for a drummer if you're interested. Um, hit me back. He was. We got Immediately him. Immediately said no. We, he said no, and I was like, well, too bad you're already actually in the band. I, like, uh, well, I have to, I guess. <laughs> what, were, what was your musical experience with bands before joining The Word Alive? Oh, God. Um, I did, I, I tell, because I give lessons, I had to give drum lessons all the time. I tell my students I would never have done drums if it wasn't for marching band. I did marching band for a year and a half. I marched snare, band geek, you know. And then uh, I was in this local band called Oceans Will Part until I was like, from where? where? Where are you from? I'm from Peoria, Arizona. So it's like like western suburb of Phoenix. But uh, yeah, I did that. And then the YouTube thing kind of just took off. And then I, I filled in for a band called Texas in July when I was 16 uh, in Pennsylvania. Took a week off school, flew over there, did that. And that's kind of what started everything. Did you know uh, The Word Alive when they hit you up? How yeah, you? yeah. Um, since, you know, since they're from Arizona. Actually, one of my best friends at home, uh, it's like The Word Alive was like his favorite band. So oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, so dude, guess what? When when he called me, we talked for like 30 minutes on the phone or whatever, and then uh, I I called that friend and I was like, so the word alive just asked me to play. He's like, no fucking way, dude. <laughs> it's pretty funny. And that was in was that 2012? 12, you guys were saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over four years ago now, which is time really flies. Crazy. Yep. Uh, Isn't that wild? Does. An entire high school career yep. has yeah. now spanned in the amount of yeah. time that you've been you in the graduated band. Graduated high school twice. C congratulations. Thank you. Music. Dark Matter wasn't the first CD you did with the guys, was it? Correct. I did Real. Okay, okay. Nice. Yeah. That's right. I guess that was coming out last time you guys were on Warp Tour. Yep. yep. 2014. It wow. Came out. God, time and he flies. had joined like right after Life Cycle. So like he did every show that we played while playing Life Cycle. Songs. So were you playing those exact drums or were you bringing like your, your own twist to it like you do? I, I, you know, I... I spice up a little bit, a little nutmeg, a little uh, rosemary. A little spice here and there. Some olive oil. And how, how did the writing process change once he joined the band? Did, they, did it just bring well, a whole new element to at it? At first, it didn't change too much, which we wish, you know, in hindsight, now that we've got to dark matter. Um, yeah, so was, let's talk about real. Yeah, it was, so it wasn't like for so real. So real was a little too much. Like, we were kind of disconnected. We were in a weird place as a band. We'd had the member changes. Um, we were kind of going through, like, a... I don't want to say necessarily identity crisis, but that's probably like the closest term I could come up with. 
we didn't know exactly what we wanted to do. We all were going through a transition where we kind of each wanted something different and we tried to please everyone. You something know, music, musically different? Musically, yes. And so like there's like some songs that are very this way and some that are like way over here. Um, and that was, you know, in an effort to try to like please everyone. In um, the band. Ins- instead, yeah, instead of focusing in on, hey, what do we all love? Let's start there and let's work our way out. Um, so there were like some of our favorite songs in the album, like Play the Victim, for instance, is one of them, was written like, m- well, minus me, but the band like in a room together. Most of the Very songs, small. though... Yeah, most of the songs, though, had been written, like, Tony would take his computer home, he'd write guitar part, guitar part, program drums, program play bass, program synth and electronic components, and then it was like, here's the song. And then there's not much, like, give and take when it's like that. Um, and the same would be for, like, Zach would take his. So it was like, everything was kind of like one Like, here, I'll make a song, and then you put your part on it. Yeah. I'll make a song, and, you put your part on so it. So that's not how you're going to get mostly usually like the best song um, it's, that's not really the band coming together to yeah. make a song and it doesn't exactly. mean one person can't have a great amazing idea like life cycles was is still one of our biggest and favorite songs and it was very much uh, written that way you can have that lightning in a bottle but i mean 999 times out of 1000 it's not going to come together like that and that still had like everyone at the time was like you know back to that record was like had input was like their style was you know got to breathe into the song real was more like well i already wrote this part i like this part let's just keep it and then kind of everyone wasn't really willing to compromise um or you know discuss things um and try to find you know some mutual ground so that's why um to us like real like it's kind of all over the place so reflecting back on it how do you guys feel about that album is it a little too all over the place like for it to to be considered a favorite or what i don't even know that it's sonically that it's all over the place i think it's more just like we can write better songs than we did and some of the songs on that album i love um some our fans love a lot but then there's some songs that we look back on and we're like this wouldn't have been even a b-side song on like dark matter or life cycles so we're like we kind of like hit that plateau where something needed to change and when we went in and we were talking about writing for Dark Matter, when we were talking about recording a new album, we are like, whatever we do, it has to be different from that because none of us were, like, fulfilled. You none of us like were it, totally it happy. None of us felt like this is the word alive. And that was the goal with the new album was we need to hone in and showcase what the word alive is so that we can take that and then move forward um, instead of just kind of, like, keep reaching for things that aren't really us. Um, and that's why Dark Matter, I think, is our best album, is we had those hard conversations. We, we, everyone's heart, soul, and impact and, and influence is in each of the songs, no matter how little or great of... Someone uh, always had at least some input on a track. Everyone always had free reign to be like, hey, I'm not really feeling that part. And instead of, in the past, maybe... I like, like it, I'm keeping it. Yeah, it was like, okay, well, let, let's come up with other ideas. Like, and almost every time we did that, no matter how uncomfortable it was, we came up with something better. So, and, and that's kind of how we're at now. We're like, man, if we knew then what we know now, you know, like we feel like we, we had, you know, all this potential, but now we're just getting to scratch the surface of actually honing in on songwriting and, and making songs that can impact you immediately. And you don't have to listen to them 10 times to know all the parts that are going on. Mm-hmm. And you guys worked with Matt Good. Yes. on the album. I'm a huge fan of Matt. I've loved him since Dear Diary came out. He's, he's how, how did you guys get in touch with him? Why did you guys decide to work with him? I mean, you want the honest story? Yes, <laughs> not the lie. <laughs> uh, that's a good question, actually. All right, all right, I'll spill the beans. Um, okay, so originally we were scheduled to do two months with John Feldman. Oh, wow. Um, yes, now I remember. And <laughs> you blocked that memory out for the last year. Yeah. And um, and he, he got basically an offer to do a band that was quite substantially bigger than The Word Alive. Um, well, was we it had, Five Sauce? Uh, some of theirs, yes. Some of theirs, and then some from another like major label, like huge band, um, or a group, rather, for them. But... Uh, yes, some very big things. It's like any anyone. I, we don't fault him at all. You know, like I, I love John. Um, it's that'd be like you know 
me if it if we were on tour with someone and i don't know if like lincoln park or slipknot was like i was literally gonna say slipknot is like hey like word alive do you want to come on tour we'd have to be like sorry guys like we have have to go go tour with slipknot real quick you know so like it's one of those things like we're old enough to understand like you know shit happens and you got he has to do what's best for his career his family but we had already taken the time off and he was willing to do the album but he need he needed to do it in two parts and different time schedules and we were like well, we already took off four out of six months to write and record. Um, we're like, so we the, can't take off more time. When you say four out of six months to record, you mean that you've spent four months writing stuff? So, so June, July, August, we actually wrote and recorded in the first week of September. Um, we spent writing and recording Dark Matter. Um, we had had our first writing session in January. We did, took like a band vacation um, near like Marina Del Rey, Culver City area. Um, we rented a studio to practice in and we rented a house to just hang out in because um, we kind of wanted to get back to like the basics of like let's just have fun be friends hang out um, write some hang music out, you know like write some music during the day do fun stuff at night um, we got a couple ideas that ended up becoming songs um, on Dark Matter but for the most part we were kind of like still a little lost um, so we wanted to take m- more time than ever before regardless to make sure we got the album we wanted well, when the, the schedule changed, but we couldn't change our schedule because we couldn't take more time off financially, um, we started to think of different people. And Zach had been hanging out at Matt's studio a lot um, in Arizona, and we've all known them for a long time. We've been friends with them. We toured with from first to last um, seven years ago. Oh, nice. Um, so we've kind of awesome. kept in touch, been friends ever since. And he was like, dude, Matt's been doing a lot of like stuff underground like that's really good. And he's very hungry um and it was in arizona and we just were like hey you know let's give it a shot and we're like worse you know thankfully this wasn't the case we're like worst case scenario we can make it an ep or you know something like that um, which is why there's some ep ideas floated around the internet for a while that we weren't doing a full length but um it came out great and um it was the best thing that i think could have ever happened i don't know that dark matter would be dark matter without us going to matt good that's crazy. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. That that must have been so wild to think like, damn, John Feldman to like you're probably just, what the hell are we gonna do now? And then it, it ended up coming. We did have that like week week and a half of where we were. We were on uh, our headlining tour. Um, we we're literally sitting in the back lounge of our bus and we we're just like, what? When we got the call, we're like, what are we gonna do? Like we we just took off all this time. We like made this you know financial sacrifice so we could really get the best album to date, and we're like what do we do now? And luckily, you know, it worked out for the better. Mm-hmm. And now the CD's out. You think it's the best album that you guys have put out? Easily. And and uh, so the lineup now, how do you feel like about the lineup and the music of The Word Alive? Is this the big, the, the most solid that the band has been? De- definitely. And like when we think about like, and no offense to our old past members, like they're still very close friends with all of us. Like we're, we all, they come out to shows still. Um, we always hang out. Um, a few years ago, our old drummer came out for a song and Luke, handed over the reins for a song like just oh nice because it's fun good man um and but like this is the word alive like dan daniel's been in the band five years now luke's been in the four our band's only been a band for eight years touring for seven years so it's like the majority of the time it's been this is the word this alive. lineup like, is the majority this is what most people have seen us live that it's this lineup so um yeah this is the word alive uh hopefully you know you know the lover to hate it hopefully you love um you know where we've gone and progressed to but we at the end of the day this is what we love more than anything is this album mm-hmm. are you excited looking forward now to the next album even though this one just like came out are you i have a feeling you'll be excited because you kind of know what worked this time around exactly yeah. we we've already talked about it we're just like okay we have like we know what we are now people know what we are now now let's top it um so that's kind of i don't know at what point when we'll actually begin doing things like we've always done, we've always kind of written year round. Just you never know when, mm-hmm. whenever when you're an inspired, idea pops up, yeah, you just, just gotta it get it down. But um, yeah, I, I'm excited for whatever you know comes next because I'm having the most fun I've ever had being in a band this far into it, and I'm just like, and all of our friends, like a day to remember, Pierce the Veil, um, even Sleeping with Sirens to an extent, um, a bunch of our friends. It was like year seven, eight, nine, where they like it just clicked, and they they knew what their bands were. They put out the albums that put their bands on the map, that took them to where they obviously have great careers now. 
so it's kind of exciting in a way. It feels it's, it's like, a similar story for you yeah, guys. It feels like okay, we you know we put out our best album. Seems like everyone agrees, <laughs> you know that it is. Yeah, the response kids have loved it too. Yeah, which is it, awesome. It's been it's been amazing. It's been this is our best summer on Warp tour. Um, today we had our best crowd we've ever had on any date of Warp tour. Um, and um, you're, and we, you're playing quite a bit of new stuff too. Yeah, we're playing three out of the six songs are new. Um, and just people, I guess, gravitate towards it, which is it. it's great. That's awesome. I'm glad it's going so well. I'm glad that uh, the CD was such a success for you guys. It was about time that we finally chatted about yeah. you, Too about long. the band. And then we even got a second person in on this that I didn't expect. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, keep okay. killing it this summer on Warp Tour. It's hard to know.